Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, So, it's season one, episode two. I don't know about you, but for me, so far, it's a big accomplishment. Um, You know, I made this commitment, like I said, about doing the podcast every single day. You're talking about for one year, we're talking about 365 days. Can I do it? Um, One thing with me, I'm a little obsessive when it comes to, you know, goal setting or things like that, which you should be able to tell uh, because of the fact that I write books. So um, Freestyle for Life was my first book. Um, Then I did Freestyle. Then I did um, The Seven Simple Steps. And then, of course, coming out in March, we have Yes, Yes, Y'all, which is three books in one. Um, So... So yeah, so I can I can commit. I can pretty much commit. Uh, and I'm determined. And like I said, I had said yesterday, I'm trying to do this and make this as low tech as possible. So, you know, it probably won't be the best quality. You'll probably hear the noises and so on. That's fine. Okay, so the key is, is that, so when I go on the road, I can take this, I have my phone. It's all on my phone. I have, listen, I have an entire setup I can... I have great microphones and cameras and you name it. Um, but for this, I want to just use the phone. So that way, if I'm sitting in the parking lot in Walmart while Angel's inside shopping and it's getting late, I can knock out a, a podcast, you know, which is cool. So <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> so um, like I said, um, I'm using the nights to basically reflect Um and this has helped. It's so funny because last night, which was the first episode, it actually did what I wanted it to do. A lot of times I, you know, I, I get to bed and my head is spinning. I mean, so much information, so much stuff going on, good stuff, bad stuff, scary stuff, like, you know, um, decisions that I have to make, you know, um, dealing with certain people. Uh, And then I I, I lay down and my head is spinning. I I keep thinking about this stuff. And a lot of times what I do is my technique. Call me crazy. I find a problem. Okay. Um, And I try to just focus on that one problem. (laughs) And I try to sleep on it. And a lot of times in the morning, I have a solution. Sometimes it's three, four o'clock in the morning. I have a solution. Um, I wake up several times in the middle of the night. Um, go take a leak, whatever, um, go drink some water. I usually have water beside me, but, um, uh, but there's been plenty of times that I got up and in the middle of the night and I have the answer and it's great. So, and I've been doing this for years. Um, it also, I've also done it with, with like, uh, my books. So like if I'm, if I'm working on a plot and I'm like, man, I need a good ending. I would put the ending, I would put that in my head and sleep on it. And a lot of times, if not in the middle of the night, by the morning, I have an idea. If not, the exact idea I need close to it. So um, so last night was, was kind of cool because um, what I wanted to do with this podcast is you know, the reason why I focus on one thing is because I got a lot going on in my head and I'm not trying to make it seem like I I got all this shit going on and everything. No, it's just, I run and I operate in a, in a particular kind of business that has its share of problems. Um, I'm a a entrepreneur. I'm self-employed. I have been doing this for what? 25, 30 years. I have an entire family that depends on me you know, homes, cars, so on, that 
and I don't have sick days. I don't have, uh, I, I don't have a, you know, I don't have the benefits of a regular nine to five. If I don't work, I don't get paid. Period. If I don't service my promoters, somebody else will, and there's a good chance that I'll lose that account because I allowed someone else to step in. Okay. So, um, but anyway, so last night. I was able to lay down, and because of the fact that I spoke with you guys, my head was clearer than it has been in such a long time. Now, I remember I got up around, God, I think it was like 3.45, something, 3.47. Um, I got up wide awake. In fact, I kind of couldn't wait to get back in the office um, because I'm excited with a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now for the new year. But I didn't do that. I went back to sleep because I know what's going to happen. If I stayed up by like 2, 3 p.m., I'm going to be exhausted. And I hate to nap. I don't like to nap. So I like to get up early and I like to try to get to bed. You know, I try to shut down before midnight. You know, these podcasts, I am doing my best to do them at night. In fact, I'm not even going to do my best. That's the only time I'm going to record them. I will record them only at night. It has to be at the end of the day. My mind has to be clear. And uh, and I, I need to be able to bring something to the table. I need to be able to talk to you guys or something. So, you know, <clears throat> with that said, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm, you know, I I'm still got this flu kind of lingering. But anyway, so, all right. So what's the highlight of today? So work itself still pretty slow. We probably won't get you know most of the calls until until uh, next week. We have the shows that are trickling in. There's a lot of the big shows, the Bobby D's, the the Allen Backs. Uh, those shows are coming in now. And we're starting to fill up the calendars. Uh, some of the smaller shows are calling, but they're not going to stop biting until next month. That's fine, beautiful. Um, so today I'm doing a lot of work on you know my website and some of my social media sites and trying to get everything on the same page so that way I could be more efficient. Um, um, I have to start editing the books. Uh, Yes, yes, y'all. They have to be done. I already have them out for pre-sale. And when you're dealing with Amazon, if you set a pre-sale date, if you set um, a release date for a pre-sale, if you do not release your book on time, You get penalized to the point where they will not, this is what I'm getting, they will not let you upload any more books for a year. And I'm trying to do a book a year, so that's not going to work for me. So um, the book, Yes, Yes, Show, is already written. Um, I'm just editing. I'm just editing, and then I have to format. I format pretty quick. I format for Kindle and for paperback. I usually do them at the same time. Um, But anyway... Right now, the, the Kindle version's on for up for pre-sale. So, um, so the paperback and the, the actual Kindle, they'll both be ready by the 27th. So, anyway, so, highlights of today. Very funny situation, okay? So, our good friend Felicia uh, hits us up, hits me up today, tells me the situation about a show in Connecticut being promoted, and of course, they got the phony girls on it. Now, God bless her, <laughs> As, and God bless so many of our friends and fans. She's more of a friend than a fan, um, and um, she went all out. She really got, she, it hit her, and uh, and she, she threw her duke up, dukes up, and she, she, she spoke up and she fought. A lot of times, I've I've always been the center of that attraction. I tend to pull back a bit and kind of just let everybody else get into it because my my voice is just so loud. But the fans and others beside me, they seem to talk speak a lot louder. You know, meaning the promoters listen. Me, they expect it, but when the fans start speaking up, that surprises them. So um, uh, she started speaking up, and she pretty much got everybody riled up. And then Angel got on, involved. Now, if you notice, Angel does not, she doesn't do it that often. And when she does, we try to keep it contained to Freestyle Against Phonies because we control that page. And 
we can monitor it. You know, we're not if somebody dogs it, we're not gonna delete it either. So, but we'll be able to keep it real fair, keep it clean, and and put put all the the information out there. So, um, not only that is whatever Angel says, it's important for others to hear it, to read it. Now, I never think that the club owners have anything to do. It's very rare. Some t- some of them do, but it's not. That's not typical. A lot of times it's the promoters, and when any promoter. So this is the deal. Any promoter who, um, any promoter who, um, who claims that they know that these are the cover girls, uh, I'm sorry, they need to find a new line of work. Okay. Um, Okay, so I never want to blame the club promoters. I'll be real with you. There are some who they know what's up, but the majority of them, they really don't know. They're not really that caught up. As far as they're concerned, the promoter is coming to them with a deal and they're trusting these promoters to bring them the goods, to bring the right thing, not to deceive their audience, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, so if a club prom- owner tr- is trusting a promoter to bring in an act, it is important that that promoter brings in the correct act, not only for the sake of the, the owner and his audience, but also for the genre as a whole. So why do people bring in these phonies? Very simple, very simple. They're cheaper. That's it. They're cheaper. Of course they are. You know? And when somebody claims, oh, we own the name, or who cares? That's all the promoters want to know. They want to know, well, can I use the name? So that means it, it doesn't matter who, you know, who they're bringing in as long as they can use the name. So so this is this is, you know. This is where, you know, everything kind of starts to fall apart, you know? So, but anyway, so that was what was happening today on Freestyle Against Phonies. Um, Andrew got involved, and it got really heated. Not not with her, not that she got heated. She she said a few things that were, were on her mind. She laid out a couple of screen captures, caught this guy in a few lies. Um, and then uh, she's kind of, and then everybody else got involved. And that's what this page is for. This page is is to let people know, hey, the fans are not going to stand for it, you know? So, but, you know, they call it the drama group. I try to play along with it. But, you know, people, it really isn't the drama group. You know, there's no drama going on unless somebody's, you know, bringing some sort of deception, you know? And uh, so, you know, so it, it's crazy. Listen, this has been a long-winded situation. I started Freestyle Against Phonies. I don't know. When was that? 2011? 2010. I don't remember. But anyway, what was the reason? Well, the reason was when I was fighting, this is before um, before uh, I put the cover girls back together. It was just Angel. And I had her out as Angel OCG. Um, the fake cover girls were out there. They were out there. They were doing their thing. And um, if they would have just did their thing and just, you know, not cause trouble we probably wouldn't have any problems. Uh, but what was happening is their people and the people behind them were, were taunting us. And they were, you know, not only were they doing shows all over the country as the cover girls and, and lip syncing to Angel's voice, but they were getting on the phone and trying to stop her solo shows. So, and then what happened was we started seeing that there was a lot of artists that were not taking our back. And we were like, wow, okay. So they really don't care, you know? Some of these people were their friends for whatever the, whatever the reason was. So we said, okay, all right, cool. But so this is what we're going to do. We're going to show the market that it's not just about the cover girls. We're going to show the market that there's a bunch of other phonies involved. And that's what we did. 
and we just started to shine a really bright light on all the deception. Now, the cover girls weren't even a big thing anymore. It was like, oh, man, you know, some of these concerts were like three quarters of them were a, a fake or deceptive acts in one way or another. So, you know, little by little, you know that it, we made a big turnaround. I'm, I'm so grateful. I couldn't do it by myself. I set up the page. I kind of you know, led the troops, but I, I got to give it to the fans, man. Those fans really, really stepped up and um, they came through and um, I, I really appreciate every single one of them. So, but, you know, Freestyle Against Phonies is a very important part of freestyle history. We're not here to destroy the genre. We're here to to maintain its integrity, you know? So I want people to, to understand this. I don't expect, there's a lot of, if you notice, there's a lot of artists that don't, are not vocal on there. A lot of them. And I don't blame them. And I probably won't, wouldn't really encourage them to speak up. You know, they, listen, they have their careers too. They got bills to pay just like anyone else, you know? So I, I really, I can't hate on them, you know? Many artists, believe it or not, have taken, pull, pulled me to the side and they've told me and they've, 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 They've come to me and they said, Latif, listen, I see what's going on. I'm totally against it. But, you know, I got to stay quiet. And I, I, I shake their hand or I hug them and I'll say, thank you. I, I understand. I, I got you. I understand. I understand. That's fine. And I, Just the fact that you came and you made me aware of this, I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, um, I mean, come on. I mean, even gotten to the point where I was campaigning for a very long time about sharing stages with phonies. I mean, I had a whole campaign. That campaign went on for several years, probably about five years. I mean, I was telling people do not share stages with phonies. But guess what? Oh, and as an example, I made sure none of my acts shared stage stages with phonies. And my acts are not cheap. So I want you, I want you to realize this now. I turned down a lot of money. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? The girls didn't give me any problems. I'm talking about cover girls, Lil Susie, and when I did SAL, okay? We ended up being the only ones who didn't share stages with phonies, okay? And then I realized something. I realized something. And I think I realized it because... Someone was telling me about a situation that was happening backstage. And um, it came, I came to realize that, you know what? By us not attending these events, we're making these events very comfortable for phonies. Think about it. You know, backstage, a lot of acts hang out with other acts. That's when we see everybody. We haven't seen anybody in a while. We'll hang out. We'll sit down with them. We'll talk and whatever the case may be. You know, it's usually pretty social. And it's actually, it's fun. It's cool, you know? So what was happening is this was the situation with the phonies. They were mixing and mingling with all the other acts. And they were becoming friends. They were, they were human beings. So, you know, we can't expect these other acts to hate them. That's not right. They can't, you know, maybe they'll respect us, but we can't, we can't ask for that. And I realized that I realized that that was very selfish of me to even suggest that, you know, and, but when I came to realize, to the realization and I, I ended up and it started with me, um, encouraging Susie to do a show with the phony girls. And trust me, she fought me on it. She did not want to do it. But then I told her, I said, listen, we're going to start doing it too. I said, we have to. And she was like, are you sure? I said, yeah. And she went, it was in uh, New Jersey, and she went with her husband, and she did a show. She didn't even see the girls. Um, and it was fine. And then we ended up doing a show in, um, in, Cal in Florida with a couple of phonies. And what I didn't notice was this. Okay, and this was crazy. When we got there, we realized that they were doing exactly what 
I heard they were doing. They were mixing and mingling. They were chilling out in a group with a bunch of artists, having drinks, laughing, choking, really, really getting down with the scene. But the minute we walked in, I guess me in particular, with my freestyle against phonies wristbands, okay, all of a sudden, shit got silent. I'm serious. I saw heads turn. I saw eyebrows raise. I heard the, you know, the, the teeth being sucked. Um, and I went, checked with the sound. When I got back, these people were gone. Now, remember, I have the cover girls. There's a good chance we're going to be closing the show or being towards the end. These acts are not. They're usually opening the show or somewhere in the middle. Um, And so when we came back, we realized that they were gone. Then we ended up doing another show. I forgot where we were. Chicago, maybe? I forgot. No, matter of fact, I think it was in Florida again. Same thing. Same thing. We walk in, they leave. And I realized that, oh shit, we broke this up. This is what I should have been doing from the get. Not not going to a show, not collecting my money for each one of these shows, not depriving my girls from making their money. No, that was the wrong thing to do. I realized I should have been at each and every one of these shows, making them as uncomfortable as I possibly can with my freestyle against phonies wristbands. Not only that, I went with a bag full. So everybody that I saw, I was giving, I wouldn't just give them a wristband. Guess what I would do? I would put it on their wrist. Okay. So, but anyway, so we realized that that was the key. Um, And part of the reason why I had the wristbands, it was because of that, is because I started telling people, especially because I was telling fans also, don't go support these shows. But that wasn't right either. That was, that was messed up of me. I should not said that. I'm telling fans not to go to a freestyle event because there's one or two phonies on it. And that was that was wrong, and I apologize. I appreciate everyone who listened to me. Those who didn't know her feelings, I should never have said that, okay? This is music from the 80s, early 90s. We don't know how much longer we're going to be doing this. We could be doing this for the next 30 years, but we really don't know. Shows are not happening every single week, and... A lot of the fans are lucky when a show does make it to their town. So why would I tell them to not attend? Whether I was there or not, that's not right. That's not right. So I told them, listen, attend. Start attending these events, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to put your wristband on. And when the phonies hit the stage, raise your wrist. (laughs) And apparently that's what everybody said they started doing. And I need to get some pictures of it, though. I think I got a couple. But anyway, so, so that's where we're at now with Freestyle Against Phonies. So anyway, that's it for tonight. I'm done. Uh, episode two complete. This one was a lot easier than yesterday. I'm hoping tomorrow will be a lot more easier. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you see where I'm going with it. Um, There's a button there that says message. If you click the message button, um, you can actually leave me a voice message and I can add it to the episode. I believe I will try it. Um, So if you guys want to do that, that's cool. (coughs) Excuse me. Um, If you have any questions, um, let's do it. So anyway, until tomorrow. Um, thank you for listening and good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.